So, you get this free scene with Bryce 7.1 Pro. Well, you didn't know you would got this free scene. Well, actually, you get more than this, a lot more than this, but I wanted to use this scene as an example to explain some things about volumetric cloud and lighting. Uh, but if you are in the position of not knowing what content you have got with Bryce 7.1 Pro, then visit Horro's website. Here's the address. Go to Bryce Documents. I'm choosing the English version because I can't read German. Go to My PDFs. Go to Diverse and download the Bryce Content FAQ. And that will tell you where your additional files are and what other content you've got that uh, you might not be aware of, such as materials, scenes, HDRIs, that kind of thing. So anyway, to return to this scene, this scene is very simple. We've got a volumetric cloud, that's the cloud, and a terrain. The terrain is uh, set so that it's underneath the cloud and catching the cloud shadow, which makes the scene more realistic. But there is a cost in that, in that every time something casts shadows, it uses up amount of processing. So if things don't cast shadows, your scene doesn't look very realistic, but it renders a lot faster. But you've sort of got a compromise with clouds, because when you look at a cloud scene, you don't really know exactly, unless you can see the entire sky, where the shadows may be coming from. So you can sometimes get away without the clouds casting shadows on the ground. However, you can't turn the cloud shadows off and then expect the clouds to look right because the clouds also self-shadow. So these considerations come into effect when you try to optimize the scene. As things stand, I've lit this scene in a very basic way. You've got the bright sun and you've got a degree of ambient effect which provides some lighting effect within the underside of the cloud and you have, unusually for me, this opportunity for light to travel through solid objects. So 80% of the light will stop and 20% of the light will go through solid objects and light something beyond them. So this is going to reduce the overall contrast in the scene. Now if you look in the image based lighting tab you'll see there is a HDRI and this has been generated from the sky but in fact it's not generating any light. The specular and HDRI effect, so that's the specular and diffuse light output from the simulated light sources, of which there are currently 16, so 16 simulated light sources, the intensity of which and colour of which are dependent on the HDRI lighting environment here, that is a hemisphere, if you imagine is encompassing the entire Bryce world. Those light sources are set to zero output, and the reason for that is if you have HDRI effect, and let's just do a speed comparison here, so I'm going to start rendering this and we'll see how long Bryce predicts it's going to take to complete. 1 minute 48. That's not too bad. Now if we go into the Skylab image based lighting and I just give some arbitrary amount of HDRI effect and then set the renderer going, it will be a lot slow. You can see that the clouds are rather over bright but then you'd expect that. Okay so we're looking at 15 minutes 20. So essentially we've increased the render time by what? Uh, at least 10 times, something along those lines. And then if we were to incorporate, say, true ambient rendering, so we'll use a premium effect, true ambience, uh, TA scatter correction, for example, and even though we've only got a maximum ray depth of 3, which is the number of times that a ray investigates a scene in the case of true ambience before it stops looking, uh, so it's going from surface to surface, then the render time, even though the HDRI will now have automatically switched over to be optimized for true ambient rendering will rise enormously. And that's because the investigation rays that are generated when the surfaces of objects are probed will scatter into the cloud and they will always go to the maximum ray depth. And because the cloud's sort of semi-transparent, being a volumetric material, then it's quite complex and this all takes additional processing. And as you can see, even though I've been talking for a while now, the render is not even at the point where it's prepared to predict how long it's going to take. I mean, from my own experience, this is going to take several hours to complete. So it's probably not even worth embarking on this. So 
it is not necessarily a good approach to start combining image based lighting or true ambience rendering with a volumetric cloud directly. Now there are some tools in Bryce to help us deal with this so let's look at the options on regular rendering again go into image based lighting here now we can exclude with the influence control objects within the scene and the slab this is the slab is the cloud the cloud is a um, three-dimensional function that exists inside this slab which is just an infinite plane with depth so that allows you for the volume of the cloud so if we exclude the slab that will improve the rendering performance because the light won't be going on the cloud so you can see now it's predicting about four minutes it's still not as efficient as it could be there are still some shadow calculations occurring as a result of the additional light source it's not perfect exclusion but uh, it does improve the performance you can see now that the ground's looking rather light so you'd you'd need to balance out the light output of your HDR effect and your sunlight in this case so that you weren't burning out the scene but you could combine image based lighting and uh, and and the clouds in that way a more efficient way to go about this although you would lose the shadows that are being cast by the cloud would be to split this scene into several parts and tackle the process that way and uh, this this could be done using a mask so if we if we select the terrain and create an object mask and render that then we can mask the ground and the sky then you can render the sky on its own so you could hide the terrain so just hide the terrain there and then do a standard render so turn object mask off and I'll do that without any image based light output okay so I can render the sky on its own I was supposed to be hiding the terrain wasn't I hide the terrain and there we go I wonder what I did hide so the terrain is now hidden it's going to take a little while for this to render even without the terrain and once that's complete I can save that image on its own as a cloudy background so uh, let's pretend that's completed so I could file um, save well, we'll export the image we'll just call it whatever it's decided to call itself for, for the purposes of this example then I would take the slab and hide that and take the terrain make that visible again and at this point I could render the terrain with uh, image based lighting for example if it's looking rather bright I could disable the sunlight and just use image based lighting it doesn't really matter so if I render that up independently and then I've got that as ground you'll notice the sky has not got the clouds in so let's say that renders out so I'll file and export the image and uh, call that number two then I do my mask so I'll do my object mask which is on the terrain render that that gives me my object mask I'll say that's done so we'll export image and call that number three and then I take whatever of my favorite paint packages and use this process so if I bring in that bring in my mask and then use uh, the masking process so what can I do um, new mask layer from image okay promote that to a full layer find the mask then that gives me an opportunity to bring in the clouds so bring in the clouds control C the image control L then I can use the layer controls here to position the terrain in front of the clouds now as I said the drawback of this is the clouds can't be casting shadows on the terrain because the terrain was rendered in the exclusion of the clouds but you can get a better lighting on the terrain if that's what you're aiming for and uh, have the clouds render in a reasonable time with more basic lighting because you don't need that advanced lighting on the clouds because clouds are very different in their structure and the way they render so that is a couple of ways that you could uh, approach this problem of dealing with the clouds I'll just revert to save however with a terrain and a landscape depending on the shape of the geometry on the terrain you can get away with a lot more basic lighting than you can when you start incorporating things like buildings because the terrain is is 
a sort of a crinkly surface and it doesn't have any real vertical surface or overhangs then you don't really have the problem of light not getting into places when you start having buildings of upright surfaces or bridges where light can get underneath that's the point at which you start needing to employ more sophisticated lighting methods or in indoor environments things are getting very complicated but because in an outdoor environment when it's sunny you have a predominant light source and that's what you mostly pick up on and then if you provide some ambient light perhaps through the ambient channel and the material or you can use sky dome if you wish which provides a vertical light that doesn't cast any shadows but does respond to bump or as I have in this case use the shadow intensity control for the sun and moon which affects all light sources equally that's the global control even though it's under the, just the sun and moon so image based lighting was also getting affected by that in that case then you can let some light through and that will reduce the contrast in your scene and it will light things that would otherwise be fully shadowed so there you go that's just a quick outline as to how you could uh, use this scene to experiment with different lighting methods and perhaps break it up into different components so you could use more sophisticated lighting so i hope that was interesting and useful and helpful to you in your rendering of outdoor environment scenes with volumetric clouds.